All right, let's have a look at the language we use as a showcase in the article. It's a simple scripting language that allows us to define conditional dialogue we know from adventure-like games. So the script starts with defining some characters and conditionals that we may use in the scenes. A scene starts with the scene keyword followed by a name or description of the scene and then the scene contains different kinds of dialogue. At the very beginning we can define dialogue lines that um, are played whenever the scene is triggered in the game. So it's basically a default introduction. The first time condition allows us to define dialogue that is only played um, when the scene will be triggered the very first time in the game. Then we have these conditional statements that allow us to um, use simple Boolean logic and the conditionals we defined above to um, define conditional dialogue. So in this case, when the scene caret condition has been set before and the talked caret condition has not been set before, then this condition applies and dialog will be triggered. We can also set conditionals in order to allow progress in our dialog and we can have nested conditions so conditionals inside conditional dialog so in this case to allow Tom to respond accordingly to Bill in case that this condition has been set before. Another implicit condition is other times other times allows us to define dialogue that is played whenever none of the above conditions applies, but there's still information to gather for the player. And in case there's no more information um, in the dialogue scene, then we can provide some dialogue that should be um, played in that case. So when the player still triggers the dialogue scene, um, these lines will be displayed. That's basically the language in a nutshell. And now let's have a look at some of the features that come with Xtext by default. Obviously we have this syntax coloring where keywords are bold and claret and strings are blue. You can use the preferences to change these settings if you like, but these are the defaults. Then we have error markers. So whenever we do something wrong in the script, for example, forget the column here, then we get this red error marker at the um, side here and at this token. And the editor provides us with the, some information what's wrong in this case missing column at bill so we know what to do in order to fix that. Another feature is content assist. So it's context sensitive help if you like. Pressing control space will show us all options or possibilities at the current cursor position. So let me just get rid of that um, example. So we have an empty dialogue script here and pressing control space will show us what is possible in this case in an empty script. So we can just use the content assist to define our script. Something like this. Let's get back to the example to show you that this also works here. So the content assist provides us with the available characters which are Bill and Tom. The possibility to start a nested condition here which is also allowed and setting conditions or end the first time condition. So when I for example add Steve Content Assist will also feature Steve. 
Okay. Another um, nice feature are quick fixes. So in case I type something wrong, for example, this, then the quick fix um, feature provides us with uh, the ability to fix that um, using one of these hyperlinks. So it provides us in this case with all, with all available um, characters and we can just select one in order to fix that, make it syntactically correct. We have a lot of um, references here to Bill and Tom and to these conditionals and in case we want to change one of the names or identifiers of these definitions that would break our script because Tom is no longer defined so we're not allowed to use Tom as a character in the, in the scenes. So that's not what we want to happen. Instead we can use the rename refactoring feature which is another built-in feature I wanted to show you in order to change Tom to Richard. We can select the rename refactoring feature for example using the context menu and it allows us to rename Tom to Richard and all the um, references are updated automatically for us. And that's what we want to achieve um, in the article. Now let's head back and see how we can create such a language and editor.